Hey guys, it's Dr. Adam. This is number one on what we're gonna call Bully Blog. This is gonna be a weekly blog dedicated just to Bulldog owners. And uh, the idea here is to give you guys some good tips, go over some common subjects you as bully owners are, are gonna hear at the vet, and hopefully uh, avoid some preventable issues uh, going to the vet. So this week I wanna talk about infection. Hands down the most common reason we see a Bulldog here, either on referral or just common routine basis. So. Two things I want you guys to think about when it comes to infection, yeast and bacteria. Yeast and bacteria are always, always, always secondary, always. Yeast and bacteria like a hot human environment and uh, in a hot human environment, that's where they're gonna flourish and, and, and create their so on infection. So infection's always being secondary. The question should always be, what's the predisposing cause? Why did my bulldog get yet another infection? Why do I keep getting the cephalexin and ear meds and, uh, powders for the paws. So I want you guys to think about the two A's. The two most common predisposing causes for yeast and bacterial infections in bulldogs is going to be anatomy and allergies. So let's start with anatomy. As we all know, our cute little bullies have their facial folds, their tail folds, and the females are really prominent recessed vulva. Um, and they also have really stenotic ear canals. Stenotic means really tiny, narrow ear canals. So all of those things I just described retain moisture and heat. And again, that's why yeast and bacteria love it. So rather than be reactive and wait for an issue to happen, be proactive. Starting as a puppy, you, I want you to have two things. I want you to have a good ear drying solution and I want you to have good drying wipes. Now some recommendations, Malachite wipes, Keto Seb wipes, almost like Stridex pads, and then the ear stuff, anything with propylene glycol. So get rid of the term cleaning, because when you're cleaning the area, you're, you're too late. You want to proactively get some drying solution that will prevent an issue. So with that being said, you have those two things. You get in a routine of using those. You're going to avoid the anatomic predisposition, which leaves us with the second A, which is going to be allergies. Allergies, as we all know, go hand in hand with bulldogs. Now, unlike humans with allergies, where we have an inhalant allergy, it's going to be a uh, little hivey skin, scratchy throat, red eyes. Um, or in a GI case, if we have a food allergy, it's going to be maybe bloating or, or vomiting, diarrhea, nausea. In bulldogs or any dog, allergies are always manifested through the skin, irregardless of the cause. Whether it's food, inhalant, contact, it's going to be through their skin. And what allergies do is they make the skin red and inflamed. So again, that red inflammation provides heat. And then you have a little outside moisture, yeast and bacteria are going to cause infection. So knowing your two A's, what proactively can you do as a bulldog owner? You see your bulldog itching and scratching, you can assume they have an allergy. Get to your vet, address that allergy, and in future blogs we can discuss the ways to go about uh, isolating what kind of allergy they have and how we're going to go about managing it. So address that allergy and then proactively start doing stuff about those folds and those ear canals and I bet you you're going to avoid a lot of those future infections. But hold yourself and hold your vet accountable. You get diagnosed with an ear infection, skin infection, tail fold infection. How did my dog get it? How do I prevent myself from coming back to the vet? So hopefully that helps, guys. I'm looking really forward to uh, this bully blog. This is going to be a weekly informative thing for you guys. And uh, like it, share it. It's going to be awesome. So take care, guys.